Yo, what's up? Today on Passport Kings, I'm going to go over a comment that a black conservative left me. And it disturbed me. <laughs> and it's going to also prove why black people need to travel more. Engage! I'm Rockland. I travel the globe for leisure, exploration, and education about different cultures. Join me, and you too can be royalty. This is Passport King. Welcome aboard, abroad. Yo, sometimes when I'm not traveling, I get into political debates with people online. I mean, it intrigues me how um, people think of the world completely different when they've grown up in a different environment. I know some people have set the rules of this world to work in their favor at all times, and I must admit, they did a bang up job. It's almost like they covered all corners from financially, mentally, emotionally, and religion. The only thing is, those that aren't in power are usually wondering why things aren't fair. And they claim that if they had things their way, things would be fair. Unfortunately, I have a distinct feeling that that is not the case. Why? Because power corrupts and total power corrupts absolutely. So I'd have to say, you know, if tables were turned, many of us would probably play the deny game that they play with us all the time. But that's not what I wanted this video to be about. Nah, this video is about people with no power thinking that the people that are in power will accept you as an equal if you just pick up their ideologies and do and say the things that they always do and say. Why is that dumb? Because their number one ideology is that they are superior to you. You can turn on your own, argue their message until you're blue in the face, and even be given the illusion that they are starting to warm up to you. But it seems as if everyone except for you know the history and consequences of people who try to fit in the way you're trying to fit in with them. They will use you, then they will abuse you, and throw you away. If you don't believe me, ask OJ Simpson and Bill Cosby what happens when they're finished with you spreading their message. They will forcefully eject you out of the building and into financial ruin and character assassination. It happens every time. The moral to the story is, and has always been, no matter how much you like them, they will not like you. Black conservatives. So here's the post from one of these black conservatives for all African American people that was supposed to be the answer to the African American's plight in America. Stay all the way to the end for my response. This dude in my book is a coon slash jerk, and I've come to that conclusion from reading his millions of other posts that are always bad mouthing black people in the same group. Sometimes I'm not sure if he's saying this stuff just to get attention and the spotlight, so just in case, I'm gonna keep his name anonymous. Here's his comment. Number one, leave the Democrats. Number two, Get back to traditional values where men are men and women are women. Number three, we have to become savers and investors across the board. There's way too much external consumption. Number four, we must spend with us and we must provide excellent service to those who are spending with us. Number five, black churches have to bank black. They get a lot of our cash. Number six, black banks have to lend money, upgrade service and technology, get serious about mortgages, insurance, and investment vehicles. Think Merrill or BOA. Number seven, we've got to discipline our children. Number eight, our men have to be better fathers and women better mothers. Number nine, we've got to get very serious about education. Number 10, we must build schools and colleges. Number 11, we must build hospitals. Number 12, we have to farm. Farming is critical to our survival. Number 13, we have to be advocates of low to no taxation across the board. Number 14, leave the goddamn Democrats. Number 15, destroy today's version of rap music. It's shit, it's poison. Number 16, we've got to own our music and make more Motowns and Gamble and Huffs and push quality music. Number 17, black talk radio must stop tricking for Democrats. Number 18, we have to make our kids spend as much time studying as they do on the football field, basketball court, and playing video games. Number 19, we have to enforce a strong culture that rids itself of tats, weed, sagging, and all other nonsense. Wow, 
There's actually a lot of things in his little manifesto that I actually agreed with. But don't go sending me no little red elephants just yet. There's some fundamental issues and I wanna go over them. First problem I have is the sagging pants thing in number 19. It's just not an important enough issue to be included here. Besides, that is something that teenagers do. Our youth are constantly being criminalized about everything they do. And treating the weird way they dress as some kind of indication of their morality is just intellectually dishonest. Sagging pants suck, but it's not criminal. No other people get judged by what the teens of their community do. Why is it okay for people to do that to us? Another issue I have is you said our men and women need to be better mothers and fathers in number eight. Once again, you're pretending that all or most black parents act like what you would see in the worst kinds of trailer park poverty situations. I'm here to tell you that there are some great black parents that never get the credit that they deserve. And a lot of them are parents in the ghetto. There are no stories on the news about them, but they certainly exist. And I would go as far as to say most black parents do an excellent job. They are usually silent heroes who conservatives will have you believe don't exist in our community. Black kids become teens and realize how rigged the system of education, finances, and politics are. And that's the main reason for rebellion. And they do the things you listed in 19. Those behaviors are not our culture. They are a direct rebellion to the bullshit that America sells. The youth can easily look around and see, as plain as day, that the American dream and the ways to achieve it is all lies. Our youth are very smart and they deserve both credit and outlets to showcase their creativity and intellect. And it doesn't take a genius to see the hypocrisy that is one only matters in this country if they are rich. Everyone else starts halfway to the goal of being rich except you people. That truth is enough to make anyone cranky towards others. And that is also the foundation of rap music. All rap songs are about the hypocrisy of our world and the audacity that it takes for a brother to make money in it and thrive in it. Okay, let's talk about the part about leaving the goddamn Democrats, cause you mentioned it twice. I agree, but I think you and people like you should also leave the goddamn and openly racist Republicans. Black people don't have a political party. We are basically playing make-believe when we act like we belong to either party. Neither is concerned with our well-being or fairness that is talked about in the Constitution. We must start our own party and vote feverishly for it until we either win or unexpectedly swing every election in this country from now on until our demands are met. And another thing, and very importantly, we have to leave. Not for good in most cases, but a lot of black people never travel. Traveling abroad will open a doorway of new thoughts in your mind. You will immediately see this world for what it really is instead of what America makes it out to be. The States is not the only place you can live a decent life comfortably. And in some cases, living in certain states in the USA could have you living a life that people from so-called third world countries would cringe at. Every once in a while, and I like to say more often than not, black people need to take a vacation. And that vacation is not only physically leaving this country, it's also about mentally leaving this country while physically leaving this country. It's almost like a detox cleansing from anxiety brought on by knowing you live in a land of rules that seem to apply to everyone else except you. A detox from racism, classism, black misandry, and the constant and heavy blanket of trying to protect you and your family from a corrupt system. Is there corruption abroad? Yeah, many times yes, but guess what? You haven't lived with it every day of your life up until this point like you did in America. But miraculously, I agree with mostly everything else you said on this post. Your bullet points are actually mostly spot on. They actually must be followed in order to live better lives in America. I know it's easy and in style right now for someone to tell their victim to take personal responsibility for the position that they put you in. And to some extent, they could be correct that one had something to do with their own position, sometimes. But remember, sometimes the problem isn't you. It's definitely not you if everything around you was set up against you. And contrary to popular belief, there is a third option other than letting the world beat you down. 
or taking life itself and strangling it by the neck until you win or die trying. It's the same answer you would tell a male friend of yours if his woman kept cheating on him or beating him. You have another option other than sitting there being abused or killing her. And you know what that is? It starts with an L, ends with an E, and it's the same word that begins the sentence. Leave a comment in the section below. Hey, did you like this video? Well, like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you need to book a trip, and of course, if you want to make money online so you can travel more, then go to www.passportkings.com. So, yo, it's okay to get down with people who are trying to get down with you, but please stop trying to be a part of something that no one wants you to be a part of. It makes you look bad. Don't look bad. Look good like a king of Passport Kings.